Hello again. Today we're looking at Deuteronomy 15, and we see a, a provision in God's law called the sabbatical year. So every seven years, there was to be a liberty proclaimed uh, from debts, and even slaves were to, to be let, uh, let go. And more than let go, they, they were to be provided for as they began a new life. Let's take a look at it. At the end of every seven years, you shall grant a release. Um, every creditor shall release what he has lent to his neighbor. And in this way, it says there, there, there will be no poor among you. This is kind of interesting because later on in the chapter, it, it says there will never cease to be poor in the land. And Jesus quotes this in the New Testament, the poor you will, will always have with you. So there's always, there are always going to be poor people, but you're supposed to do something about it, all right? You're supposed to lend to your brother who's in need, and then in the seventh year, you're supposed to uh, forgive this person's debts. All right, so what it says is that the Lord will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance to possess, if only you will strictly obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all this commandment that I command you today, for the Lord your God, the Lord your God will bless you as he promised you, and you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow, and you shall rule over many nations, but they shall not rule over you. Now, the thing is, this blessing of God was to be for all those who were in the land. Now, one person might be blessed more than another, but this person was to freely give to his brother who was in need. He says, you shall not harden your heart or shut your hand against your poor brother, but you shall open your hand to him and lend him sufficient uh, for his need, whatever it may be, whatever the need may be. Take care, he says, lest there be an unworthy thought in your heart and say, the seventh year, the year of release is near and your eye look grudgingly on your poor brother, and you give him nothing, and he cried out to the Lord against you, and you'd be guilty of sin. So, you see, if you start playing this system, and you, you get uh, stingy as it gets closer to the seventh year, well, then the whole thing falls apart, because this is all bless, uh, based on the blessing of Almighty God. So, this was the way that, that you're supposed to take care of poverty. First was to actually lend to your brother, allow him to continue in his freedom. But what if his situation continues to be very difficult? Well, it says a Hebrew man or Hebrew woman, if, if that person is sold to you, he shall serve you six years, and in the seventh year you shall let him go free. All right? free from you, and you shall not let him go empty-handed. You shall furnish him liberally out of your flock, out of your threshing floor, out of your wine press, so out of all that you have. You're supposed to let this person go almost like a son. This was the way you dealt with the poor. You see, if the person is in desperate condition and, and they have to, he has to sell himself to you, well, you bring him into your household and yes, he works for you, but then you're actually planning his release, which is coming in the seventh year. What an amazing system of uh, taking care of poverty. And it, it, you're not supposed to mistreat this person. You, it says here, you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God redeemed you. Therefore, I command you this today. But if he says to you, this person who is a slave in your household, if he says, I don't want to leave, all right, I love my household, then there was a provision for actually enabling this person to stay in the household and to be part of the group that would go up to the house of the Lord and, and to eat together with that household before the Lord your God, year by year, at the place the Lord will choose. It's amazing, really. Just an amazing reality here of being brought into a household when you were maybe lonely and poor and no one seemed to care about you. But this was the way it was supposed to be in Israel. Now, much more than that, 
think about this, that, that we pray, when we pray the Lord's pray, prayer, we, pr we pray, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We had this tremendous debt. And so we're, we're sold into bondage, but Christ frees us from that and brings us into our household. And we don't, we don't want to go out of his household. We don't want the seventh year to come. And then we say, ah, no, now I'll go out on my own. I don't need Jesus anymore. No way. We say, look, I'm, I'm here permanently. I want to be part of your household forever and ever. Let us pray. Lord, we, we thank you. You brought us into your home and we're part of your family. We're so grateful for what you have done and help us to live in that liberty today. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you now, one and all.